this is actually pretty fucking awesome. Uh, great account on Twitter, by the way, if you're not aware, is Populism Updates. They post some pretty great stuff, and this is no exception here. You know, Taro Yamamoto is apparently a politician and former actor who has been called Japan's Bernie Sanders. Uh, recently, his party has been printing posters in support of universal basic income with probably the best campaign slogan of all time, uh, print fat stacks of money, hand that shit out to everyone. So uh, pretty concise, pretty to the point, uh, pretty good values in my opinion. Yeah, that's great. Um, I'll take that over Shinzo Abe any day of the week. Honestly, I'm not really the biggest fan of Abe, so I'll take a Bernie Sanders. Why not? Yeah, yeah it's, it's cool to see the uh, political mess and, and the sort of the like popular like – populist style uh, of american politics you, normally when you see american politics being uh you know implemented abroad it's for fucking harsh austerity and imperialism so for once it's a nice change of pace to see something uh positive you know coming from um you know coming from american politics obviously i think this goes back to uh, oh yeah fuck this who cares we, we already saw enough of the story from the japan times um, well, it, is, <laughs> it, is, it is interesting too because it can it contextualizes it a little bit more uh, about how populism has really yet to reach japan although it it has reached some other neighboring asian countries apparently um but this candidacy of taro yamamoto um kind of represents that you know that left-wing populism which is potentially rearing its head uh, again this is more than uh, just some random celebrity trying to run for office. He does seem to be behind a real populist platform, again, advocating for universal basic income. Um, so it does seem pretty cool. And and it kind of goes to something we've talked about a few times on this show, which is that uh, despite the kind of like uh, the fact that a lot of lefties don't want to be associated with anyone like, you know, rich or famous, like sometimes if, if you are rich and famous and you do have a fat platform, like it is a great thing if you lend that to a leftist movement, if you're really sincere about it and, and candidates like this can, can do that, break that media bubble. Uh, you know, clearly this guy has some charisma. He knows how to perform in front of a camera. These are, you know, skills that a politician needs, especially on like a presidential, uh, level, right? Yeah, and I would just say, to uh, draw the obvious parallel, right, obviously Andrew Yang was a guy that came to politics in America with, after making a, a, a you know, an, a, 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 I, I mean, not like a vast fortune, but, you know, uh, I would say, uh, you know, ma making himself personally affluent, uh, no doubt, uh, came to politics and, you know, fiercely peddled uh, an agenda that was primarily built around uh, giving people $1,000 a month. Now, obviously, we've gotten... Uh, just deep into the weeds on Andrew Yang in this podcast, talked about the mixed bag. We don't have to do that again, but I, I just think the obvious parallel is there. And, and a, another example of somebody who wants to bring attention to an issue can use their platform. And, uh, you know, it, a, a definitely a, um, a cool to see U.S. style politics being, um, you know, uh, and I guess you can't even really call these U.S. style politics, right? Other countries, you did universal basic income before the United States. However, I think that the uh, United States uh, Western media coverage and the insanity of our media kind of definitely amplified it in a way that it was not getting in, in the past. Definitely. I mean, like you really just have to look no farther than the United States in general to see that UBI's worked in Alaska because the U S really just F their, um, their oil supply up so badly. Um, our government's giving them checks right now for like $700 a month. That's really helping them material wise. So I mean, yeah, there was just another US example of a uh, of a case study in um uh what it was 150 people in um uh, uh Stockton, California, I believe. 150 people in Stockton, California, and they uh, over a period of time they all got $500 a month, so half of what Andrew Yang was proposing in his initial uh you know popularizing of the idea. And everybody, you know, obviously there was always the like straw manning, right? Okay, if you give people money, then they're gonna, you know, fucking master made in the street and, you know, quit their jobs and, you know, set fire to everything and like, you know, whatever, society's just gonna melt down. Um, but in reality, what happened uh, was people paid off their debts, uh, people's mental health uh, improved because they weren't constantly stressed about how the fuck they were gonna pay their bills. Um, you know, they talked about having like more stability in their lives, uh, less fear and anxiety. And it's like, of course, like, of course that's going to happen. Like, it, you know, like it, it, it seems rational to anybody who has lived under a situation where they are considering their finances in a way that it like takes over your life. Right. Because 
and and, and uh, it's almost it just shows the like extreme disconnect between our commentator class and our reality that this was somehow the the prediction of what was going to occur. 